the uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, we also looked at um, why people might be afraid of people in public spaces, mm -hmm. why they're putting up these defences, what's causing this defensiveness. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about maybe we could challenge that in some way or, or find out more about that. Uh, sorry, my name's oh. Jake. I'm not sure how to change it on here, but I'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a little... Uh, 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 three dots somewhere in the corner that you kind of type in. Anyway, um, I've been doing a lot, over the last year, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, in Finsbury Park, uh, and, and I've noticed it in public parks now that the homeless are setting up tents. Uh, and so does your, does your remit, uh, does architecture extend to uh, uh, park uh, organic architecture? I we can have yes it does yeah we kind of we had discussed um sort of the the imagery of the tent and how um sorry the public are kind of taking things into their own hands um yeah sorry my flat's really noisy i'll let someone else talk <laughs> it's okay we can't, i couldn't hear anything um yeah so the what, what do you think are the are, what are you going to do with your intended outcomes uh, Ailey, again, forgive me if I've got your name wrong, I'll see your hand up, so I just want to pass it to you. Um, I was going to say about what um, what you were saying about it being like a, a bandage over the um, mm -hmm. defensive architecture. I think one of the things we were wanting to look into is exactly how much is spent by the council or by the government on defensive architecture and where that money could be repurposed in like the homeless community. Do you think it's public money that's being spent or is it private money? Um, I think I, you know, I, I see a lot, a lot of this architecture in, in new developments and, you know, and, and is it, uh, should you be speaking to property developers as well, perhaps? Yeah. Sorry, you, you, I see somebody with a hand up as well. The question that you just asked, if, if it's public money or private money, in my country, a lot of private institutions do some social work, CSR work it's called in my country, and they donate benches and um, sort of shedding spaces in public areas, but still they are not effective. Uh, they don't provide a sleeping area for homeless people. They are just sitting areas uh, for a temporary period of time. So. Um. So what's, what's your first step? Where do you start? What do you, Monday morning when you start on this project, what are you going to do? Because it, it, I don't know, it, it seems to me that it's, it's, um, it's, it's quite a challenge. Yes? Hi, I think today we've had some challenges with the tech and yeah. I've lost really time. We spent a lot of time getting to know each other. Um, we did a lot of sort of laying out the, the landscape of where we could go mm -hmm. with the project. And then we spent a lot of time auditing our skill sets and that kind of thing. Uh, so we're, I think we have to probably go back and, and work more uh, about defining our, our end game. Mm -hmm. But we've, we're kind of, we're getting there. Okay. Yeah, because it strikes me that there are, you know, there are a couple of components to this. There's the physicality of the architecture, uh, and an understanding. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite clever. Some of the architecture. I mean, it's so. So how do you, um, how do you undesign something, you know, other than you know, well, the solution is take it away, you know. So so. Uh, <sighs> What I'm trying to trying to work out in my own mind is what do you design that replaces something that you think has been poorly designed, uh, and and is the is the design challenge actually one of one of a, a broader one and what one of service design and and uh, and, and um and re looking at those the the the, the spaces where where defensive architecture has seen as, as, as been seen to be necessary 
Um, so uh, it's a very interesting project, and, and, and I'm finding it challenging myself. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it's kind of difficult to know what questions to ask of you um, at, at, at this point. Have you have some potential directions you might go in at all? Any thoughts at the moment? What options there might be? At the moment, um, when I've been doing a little bit of research, a lot of um, platforms that already exist are kind of uh, awareness campaigns and sort of making the public sort of question the way that they think about the the spaces that they inhabit. Um, and I think, yeah, it could maybe be some sort of awareness campaign about how you judge people that you see in the street or how you judge certain areas. So it's maybe we go down a more sort of like speculative thinking route or we go down like what you were talking about, Malcolm, like creating yeah. something to undesign what's mm. being done and sort of to challenge what is already there. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> The, the solution to homelessness is quite in the past has been quite often um, ignore it and it goes away or, or, or that, so take away the doorways that people sleep in and they can't sleep in it so the problem is shifted somewhere else so so I, I think you kind of you've got quite a complex set of issues to look at it's not just it's not just a, a matter of architecture uh, um, so uh, yeah, I'll be really interested to see how you how you progress. Uh, yeah, Holly. I think there's a lot of scope here for like making, I guess, like the invisible visible. And I think mm -hmm. like a possible way of going about that is by like using the actual like built environment and like having like actual design interventions where like these people like for like can reclaim them as their own. So if like, you look at like you know mm -hmm. the spikes coming from the ground, you know it's like some sort of tool that they could take and like you know turn that into yeah. like a bid for themselves or something which is definitely like kind of like a band-aid solution it's yeah. not addressing the heart but i think it's like provoking and saying okay no we need a place to exist and you can't shove us you know into the, yes. under the carpet yeah, yeah. so so that that solution would be the anti-spike spike yeah <laughs> yeah i i think kind of had this i've had this tagline like going through my head and i think it really resonates with what holly's just said like defense against defensive or like defense against defense yeah, yeah. so like equipping people and empowering to empowering them to take up that space and mm. providing something for them to do that through would be quite interesting yeah i i, I i'm very interested in the uh, the awareness aspect of, of your project as well is is because one interesting side effect of of um defensive architecture like this is if there are spikes in doorways then there are no homeless people sleeping in those doorways so the problem becomes invisible uh, and so i guess the whole awareness aspect that the, the problem exists despite the architecture uh, uh, and yeah it's this yeah the, i can't yeah i keep on coming back to thinking there are multiple strands to this that are all interlinked uh, and um i think it's kind of really really uh uh, really exciting one to, to, to look at. I think this is a good example of where you have to part with things you can't do anything about. We can't solve homelessness sure. and that would be far too big a task. So it is yeah. about placing it up and, and looking at where we can make, make some impact. Uh, they talk about you know making a degree of difference is, mm -hmm. is sometimes enough um, in, in a huge picture like that. Just you need to to be very careful about how you are about it. I mean, will, will you be doing any, Sorry, you be doing any, uh, any outreach to, to uh, local government, to uh, mm -hmm. uh, property developers, to, uh, to the, the, the kinds of people who are kind of responsible either for denying those spaces or uh, re ultimately responsible for, uh, for rehousing people or, re or finding temporary shelter? Uh, so are you doing Will you be? Will you will that aspect be be addressed as well in the project? And I was so just going to say, we move towards a longer term solution. 
Just to, just to log, you've got about two more minutes with Malcolm. So um, yes, but that's a great question. Who would like to respond to that? Yes. Sorry, I can't quite see your name. You're right, you're right. along the bottom row there. Like. Um, I think that would definitely be something that we would want to consider. As we were talking before about the concept of being a saviour and how we wanted to avoid that sort of connotation because mm -hmm. none of us have actually experienced homelessness. So sure. I, I think we're conscious of like, like how we're going to go about it and if we are going to intervene in, in the physical environment, um, we don't want to do it in a way that's a bit disrespectful towards people who are actually homeless. So yeah. I think it'd be a good it would be a good idea to talk to private companies that choose to do it and understand how, how they justify that. I mean, what I was thinking is, is that uh, um, I know that the mayor of Manchester, for instance, Andy Burnham, has had a a, a, a program in Manchester to tackle homelessness. Uh, and so it would be good to talk to people like him and, and you know, others around the, around the country, around the world, to get some insight into, into well, what they've been able to do and what they haven't been able to do. And, and, and some of that insight would presumably kind of inform uh, how you go about uh, uh, developing the project. And um, I'm afraid he's probably going to say, OK, your time's up. Uh, it's very shortly, um, I, but I'm, I'm fascinated about this conversation and I wish it could go on longer. Yeah. Well, we, have take, we have to take Malcolm away from you now, but I hope that was useful, folks. Yeah, I th it's, it's an interesting one because I, I, I think the, the, the brief needs to be written in a way. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's, it's, an it's a really interesting area to look at, but there are many components. And, and I, think, I think that the first thing you're going to do, uh, as I hear, is you sit down on Monday and go, what are we going to do and how do we do it? Yeah, yeah. Might even happen this afternoon. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Malcolm. Thanks, folks. Well done. Great discussion. I thought that sounded really interesting. We're going to, I'm going to take Malcolm away now. Okay. But, um, thanks, thanks Malcolm. Anyway. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. In a week Thank, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. consent accessibility if this is a child ch a child's game how do we how do we open that to parents and how do we cross that uh yeah like to hear your opinions on that thank you oh anyone else got anything to say you got still got a couple minutes if you want to then we can get into chat nope all right I, w I just wanted to say that um, we also thought about maybe um, how can we de-stigmatize um, uh, gender and how can we provide education um, without including our own point of view, which is very delicate. And um, uh, yeah, so because, you know, we communicate through shapes and, and colors and words, which probably in um, carry their own meanings. So how can we get rid of all these uh, meanings? Yet, yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Right. Any last bit? Still got a little bit more time. If you want to ask anything else, or should we go straight into feedback? 
Well, I can say a few things and then you can also speak with me and it'll be great if you guys, you know, jump in at any point. Um, uh, if you don't, you know, if, whatever I say. But I think first, I think this is a really, really nice thing. I think that's something that I personally also think can make the world a better place. So, um, and I think that's brilliant because it's something that's kind of, there's this idea that there's liberty or open-mindedness around there, but still it's something that's, you know, difficult to talk about. And it's, um, so, so a few things that you could maybe keep in mind is, um, if you do you have a target audience is there a specific age that you would like to look at would it be you know young how young and how old um have you thought about that like a specific um age range yes yeah, so, sorry i'm taking the hand as like sure, go, go, go. <laughs> uh, but yeah we thought initially but that might change we thought about maybe teenagers uh like what is a teenager maybe from a um 13 to um 19 that okay. might change once again okay and w where do you think this could live would it be something that will happen at schools or do you think it would could be something that would happen online um or is it perhaps a product that that you would sell or have you thought about how that would if if it would live in you know in the real world how how would that be how would it be accessed or have you maybe thought of thought of it in that way yeah yes we have not decided yet but we think about, about maybe different ways because uh, on the one hand we'd like to use a uh, digital technology and on the other hand we uh, we also like to provide access to children around the world that should be something also accessible really cool that's nice i think um that's interesting because um you know that obviously could reach a lot of people and you know that's something that would you know would be worldwide so so is it something that you think would be open for all types of cultures or you know all classes or wealth or what wealth brackets if you say so so any any young person or any teenager would would could essentially get something out of this cool um i like the idea of um that you the ideas that you were saying around it having a narrative or stories because i think there's you know having a bit of a personal aspect can make it quite nice and you know i think it's good to remember that with with this type of thing even though we all everyone has experiences of you know sexuality is a type of thing that we all that we all have in our lives in some way um it's it will always remain a personal thing as well so so it's not like as if you you know through educating people you can say things but people still have their own specific stories and um, so maybe there's something in in that, like um, you know, people, you know, giving their own accounts, so that so that it is kind of a bit more personal. People can kind of identify with it. Um, I think you know something VR could could be cool, but I, I was wondering something like a series of workshops might also be nice. Something interactive like that. Um, I don't know if if they you know there's as you said did you say maybe like a, a game or something but I mean, I mean workshops can have that kind of game um aspect like a more playful aspect because i think and i don't know how it, i grew up in south africa but I, I don't know how it was with you guys but um sex education was often like it's basically a seminar some people would give you a talk and then you get information and that's basically where it stopped but but if it's something more interactive i think that could be quite nice. It is a tricky one because it, once again, it's quite a personal thing and people won't necessarily be willing to share. So maybe if there's some way of like trying to think about that element of it, if if you do make it interactive, how how do you not cross certain boundaries, um, but also make it engaging enough for people to actually learn from it? I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, can I ask about one of the, our ideas also was maybe to include in this communication narrative some young specialists from different fields like medicine, 
psychology or something like this that could be give a real expert advice but also stay on the same flat hierarchy as the children and teenagers i think that's brilliant i think that could be a good you know way of approaching it like in terms of your concept to, to maybe if you do have you know a series of talks or, or more than a talk then maybe having different having it from different back like types of disciplines in a sense because once again sex education is often like just like a biological kind of story in a way like or at least you know presentation so maybe if it, it might actually be quite nice if you have um you know a doctor talking but then also maybe a psych psych psychiatrist psychologist and maybe um you know pe people that are, have experienced it with um um with you know around gender so perhaps you know you were saying you you want to make it you know open so that it's not just a, like a, a, a what's it a, a, um what's it when and you know like what's the word i can't think of it now male only male female kind of story so that there's different accounts of um yeah and i think it uh, it would be good to think what your what your um what you were trying to achieve really, um, you know, what is your, what is the goal that you kind of want to have through this? What, do you have something specifically that you want to say really, or achieve at least? Yeah, I think you guys have already got some great frameworks for, for a lot of this. I think, uh, I think you may be answering your own questions without realizing, I think saying that you want it to be accessible and then kind of mentioning VR, I think you know how many of you guys own a VR headset. Mm. I don't. I know quite maybe one. You know, I think like that maybe immediately takes out of the question. Mm. So uh, yeah, just try and have a think about yeah medium. So like a workshop, you know, and we can be slightly theor like theoretical, well, speculative in this workshop at the moment. Say, so, look, we we're pitching that we want to do these workshops for people and we want to take it these places. Um, but yeah, I would I would have a little mess around with kind of the actual format. I think a game is a nice idea. Again, yeah, as Goot said, a game could be within a workshop or it could be something that is like physical or it could be something on a phone. You know, there's, there's, you've got to get specific with these things. Even if, I know we're literally on the early stages, it's good to kind of test out those specifics and see if you like them and see if they work. And if they don't pivot to something else, but if they do stick with it, you know, you've already got it. I think it'd be great as well if you guys could come up with some sort of name for yourself, even if it doesn't stick, it kind of helps you guys kind of keep in focus and keep kind of on the same track as well. But yeah, sadly, we've run out of time for now. <laughs> but I think you're, you've got great potential and, you know, you've got a really good, like good sized team as well. I think that so you've got enough manpower behind this. So you'll be able to like, yeah, crack on and get something amazing. So good luck. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. See you around. Bye. Bye. design programs, exhibitions, workshops, um, and I have quite a focus on sustainable futures um, and circularity. And previous to British Council, I worked at a place called Future Laboratory, um, where I was art director, um, doing a similar thing, sort of creating installations, exhibitions to bring research to life. Um, I've also got a crying baby in the background that isn't mine, if anyone can hear that. Oh, I could hear it in the background a little bit, I was going to say. It's, <laughs> it's, it's our neighbour. Oh. I'm hiding something in the background. Cool. Um, 
Should we? You want to share your screen? Yeah. Um, should we start? Because I can share my screen. Because we've started like right. a mood board thing, and then I think Maria's um, gonna kind of talk through it. I haven't done this before, so sorry if it goes wrong. <laughs> so, okay, and if I zoom. Okay. Can you guys see okay? No. Is it sharing at all or is it just blurry? No, no, I don't see anything. Oh, what's going on? Sorry about this. But I can try because yeah. I yeah maybe. Oh, hang on. If I click that. Oh yeah. Then... No. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. So I will. Yeah. Sorry, I have this. Yeah. So our idea is a platform to empower artisans by sharing their crafts globally. So we took the problem of, um, we're thinking about the problem of transparency, uh, mostly in the fashion industry. And when the artisans uh, crafts are taken but by sometimes big brands or for too many, um, companies that they take pieces of their margin and then their artisans don't get like really a fair pay for what they do sometimes so we would like to have this place where you can find their beautiful products and you buy from them directly so it's a an online uh, platform so we are thinking to also have a physical um pop up that could um in, like it sounds like a dream honestly but that you could travel around the world showing all the all these products and we want to tell the story behind the products who made them like show transparency and also the cultural background about the techniques the materials the different regions of the world that we want to show here uh, so yeah so we are now thinking about how we what will be the name or what who are we targeting uh yeah so we were trying to create the business model canvas to think about the different uh, like key partners or uh, what's the value proposition um how this business would make money or what are the costs and all this when when it now it's only an idea but we're thinking about how to implement it so yeah <laughs> so i think um we it's, it's strange because i can't see now i'm sharing my screen so um i hope you guys can hear me but yeah we were we're thinking um obviously because it's such a like a big idea and we can kind of like add lots of different things or like, elements to it because obviously it's like uh digital um and then also like the idea of like the pop-up kind of exhibitions where we can show the work um but yeah so i guess like we were kind of thinking obviously like about how could we do this you know without exploiting people which is not what we'd want to do um and like the things to do with like language barriers and and yeah and just what your your view is on what you've heard so far it's very kind of early stages oh can anyone hear me <laughs> yeah yes yes Oh, is Hannah still there? I can't see my screen, so if I click. I think Hannah's connection might have dropped. So she probably coming back to the room now. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, that's OK. I'll keep my screen showing up.
So I don't know if she uh, could see like what we. I don't know. <laughs> you explained it really well. <laughs> I was like, yeah, and then it was just quiet. So I was like, oh, maybe we'll ask a question. <laughs> and then quiet again. I was like, oh no, what have we done? <laughs> Can you see me as well as my screen? Yeah, I see everybody. Oh, okay. Um, this on your screen on the chat, so it's a small. Sorry, Hannah is coming back now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. But we need to ask her what is what she could see on this. Yeah, like what what her views are <laughs> so far. Hi. Hi, sorry everyone, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, I'm back. Um, how far, do you want to con just continue or you can backtrack a little um, bit? I don't know when you left because I didn't <laughs> see the people like in the video, so can you like um, I, I didn't see the start, it just kind of froze when you were trying to share the screen. Um, so maybe maybe if you don't mind, you can just give a quick overview again and then continue yeah. just so I can make sure that I understand the whole concept. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So our idea is um, a platform to empower artisans by sharing their craft globally. And we decided to do this because we see the problem in, mostly in the fashion industry when artisans uh, are not place in a fair way by their work and they can reach the final customer directly because there are many other like uh, companies that take people in the marketing and so we would like to uh, they, they would like to offer the opportunity to them to sell directly to the final customer and this customer would be someone who loves crap or it could be also someone who is traveling to a country and they want to know what is the local app that I could buy here and then search in our platform too and also we want to yeah sell online so it, could, it has like different ways of uh, buying the product and the last one is a pop up that is to travel around the world to show all these products so it, that could be a physical way of showing the craft so yeah and um did you say it was like an online platform to start off with that would be like a showcasing exhibition of the craft but it was it also would operate as an e-commerce platform is that right yes yeah. yeah cool and then you said that there'd be like a physical some like physical manifestation of of it at some point yeah that like ideally that it's like a pop-up traveling around the world showing these products and yeah mm. um, <laughs> and, sorry Karen. i was just gonna add to that as well that we were thinking as well with the pop-ups that it could also be something like uh educational for the consumer or like the people that are you know interested in like purchasing some items so like they can learn about the culture like how it's made um, yeah. stuff like that and are there specific um like geographical locations that you want to focus on first or how where would you what locations would you see kind of craft coming from um i think we you know what what opened up like this pop-up shop worldwide and all like have some um, collaboration with like big market or what like to um, propaganda our workshop just yeah. let more people to know about it or like open some channels on the um, YouTube Instagram like to let more let more people to know about it yeah 
Did you, um, when you asked about locations, do you mean like as in where the artisans are based? Yeah, I just wondered like how you would source because like, you know, there's obviously, um, yeah, it'd just be interesting to know what you're thinking about that in terms of like, are there specific areas like complex zones Like we do a lot of work with Afghanistan and um, there's a company called Turquoise Mountain that support women artisans um, in conflict zones specifically and you know the reason that we work with them is because it's very hard to actually reach them like we have to do everything digitally but I just wondered like if you had any ideas around specific areas that you'd focus on first because um, obviously you know craft craft around the world is very different and there's a lot of issues like socio cultural issues that you could kind of approach through this which I'm sure you're thinking about so I wondered if you had a focus on like women and girls or you know a, a kind of um an underpinning of like social impact that might define what locations you want to start sourcing from um, well from, uh, because I'm from Latin America I would start from this, this region because yeah. of the language I yeah. think so for me uh, yes yeah. I've been to most of the countries so. Yeah. I think as well, because like we're working as a group, like globally. Yeah. Um, I guess like if it was something that we actually wanted to start, it could start of where we are each like where we're based. Yeah. Um but I think I think the aim would be to like connect as many places as possible. But uh I hadn't thought actually of like the kind of uh, like the points that you made, like the kind of uh, areas that have got a lot of like social kind of like mm. issues going on, um, mm. and even just focusing on like women um, artisans or like kind of looking into those like factors as well. So I'm just noting this stuff down. By the way, I don't know if you can see me. I feel like I keep looking away, but I'm, I'm like <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, I think. Like I think it's a really rich subject area and it's something that I've worked in a lot and I think um, through identifying like a, a social cause that is aligned with the craft, like obviously you can then weave that into the story of the product and you know we all know now that consumers, like we align our purchasing decisions with our moral values, you know we don't just buy something because you know we like it necessarily, we buy it maybe because we know that it's supporting a cause that we believe in or you know it, it we at least kind of want to know that it's sustainable and know where it's from so I think it could be really interesting if you thought about each country that you were focusing on sourcing the products or the craft from what is the project like that you're trying to support there because then that could help with your storytelling around like who made it and the country and you know I, I really liked what you said about kind of um showing more about the country and like the local area to people as well because I think using an online platform to do that could be really interesting you could like ask the artisan to like upload photographs or like even if it's stuff from their mobile phone like in quite a like DIY sort of style could be quite interesting um but I think I think thinking about like what is the thing that you want what's the impact that you want from this is is kind of really the important thing that would if you kind of you know down the line we're trying to get investment for something like this you'd want to be able to show the impact or what you were aiming to do um and i think women and girls is quite a good place to start because a lot of artisans and makers tend to be women and a lot of these women maybe are affected by war conflict they don't have their husbands anymore um they a lot of them operate in sort of cooperatives as well so maybe you want to think about like is there a cooperative in each country that you're supporting um i think yeah there's kind of so many interesting things to this and also i think you know the aesthetic approach like have you thought about like how it might be visualized like what kind of would you want to use photography would you want to use like how how would you how would this platform like look and and feel i think kn you you mentioned quite a lot about because uh, we've got to make a, a, a video and a poster yeah and um Kayen, you were saying uh, stuff to do with the video 
Yes, actually, um, for like the social issue that Hannah has mentioned, um, we don't have like a particular issue or a specific area that we want to focus on yet. Mm -hmm. But we we did like we did talk about things um, relating to like we want to represent the artisans um, who make traditional crafts. Um, and show the show their potential to integrate into the modern culture, and yeah. not just present them as um, traditional um, artisans who are making their things in a very like remote area, and we have no access to it, and they have no access to the modern era neither. But we want to like break that stereotype and bring them to the modern era, and maybe we can combine them with like a fashion trend or something um, so that they can really participate in this like market globally in just being on their own. Yeah. And um, and yeah, vision, like um, our like visual design can be something similar to that idea. And uh, we can like make things into really like fashionable campaign or something and to show like they are actually doing things that they think they are um, pretty in a sense, and not just some like very outdated like traditional thing. Yeah, I think an interesting thing for you might to maybe think about as well is like, do you want to call it craft or do you want to call it design? Because really, a lot of this is design, but we call it craft or we call it like artisan craft. But I think thinking about how how the makers are represented is really important as well um you know especially in terms of if you want to connect with like a younger generation of people that are going to be buying these products um so i think having some kind of like storytelling where you're maybe like interviewing them or, or getting them to kind of you know interact i think is really important because you also want to kind of show the people behind this. Um, and I think, you know, obviously a really important thing is fair trade and, you know, kind of looking into that kind of model um, so that you can demonstrate, you know, it's a really fair um, business model, basically. Yeah, I think like visually. Hey guys. Oh. Sorry to jump in. Oh, hi. Uh, Hello, how's it going? Sorry I missed the beginning of this. Um, I've let you guys run on a little, a little bit longer because... Um, Thank you, sorry, we had a technical yeah, well, glitch. I'm going to move on to the next one now. Have you got the link for the next trip, Hannah? Oh, um, could you put it in the chat, maybe? Absolutely, I'll send it to you on Slack. Thank you. Um, thank you, guys. I really love your idea. Yeah, I really I want to work on it with you. It sounds cool. <laughs> um, yeah, good luck with the rest of it. And, Hopefully, I'll see you guys in the um, presentation as well. Cool. Thank you so much. Hi, guys. Pleasure. Okay. Sorry, it's short. That's right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. No, we're now being broadcasted, so I just thought I'd give you a shot. If Maria pops in, it means that we're on live stream. So you're, you're, now the world can see you do what you've been doing. Uh, do you also just on a really technical thing? Do you know who's going to be sharing the Myra? 
Um, I think I will. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. I'm I've got it all set up. How do we feel? It's our first pitch. Scary. It'll be fine. It'll be great. You've got this. You've got a banging little Myro. Not not little actually. It's it's huge. I was pretty shocked when I went on. And uh, I feel a... like we got a lot done just oh, in the past yeah. like I mean, ten minutes. You only found out what your project was like officially going to be sort of this morning. You only met each other this morning, and you have this entire huge Myro board. That's wild, absolutely insane. Um, yeah, you guys are just bossing it. I don't know what else to say. You're gonna smash it. It's gonna be fabulous. I feel like because it's like an all female group. It's really annoying. You can't just share like Spotify on for you. So I was like, oh, and Maria's live streaming. So we can't have like um, copyrighted music, but just like Beyonce, just who run the world. with us any minute. Again, Jeff, I'm very, very sorry. It's fine. I, I have a good group. I'm sure they'll take notes. Also, there, there are other crits. Um, again, also, just don't worry about taking notes. I am your little note person. Note. We should do a little stretch before they come. Just an I just, oh, sorry. Just oh, a question. Do we have any ideas for what exactly we want to follow, like as the user? Or should we like brainstorm that in here too? Hello, Sam. Hello. Hiya, guys. I'm one of the module staff. We're just trying to uh, get Malcolm in here. Uh, give me one second. Yeah. I think there was like a last minute room change. Uh, sorry. Uh, cool. Malcolm's on this way. Are you guys feeling good? I need to. <laughs> yeah, you guys ready? You should be there soon. Just on his way. Yeah, you guys know, right? It's like five minutes, you guys present, and then you'll give me back, and then you guys can ask any questions, and it can be a little back and forth. Hi, I'm here, I okay. think. I'm in the right yes. place. Yes, you are. Sorry about that. I'm like speed dating. <laughs> <laughs> I've, just, I've just been into a room where they were all talking, and I thought, oh, I'd better get out. They, uh, I'm not expected. 
So here I am with you. Um, so um, running late, and um, over to you. Tell me, tell me what you're going to be doing. Who's going to start? Um, I'll just share my screen so you can see on Miro board. Okay, fabulous. So we've just been brainstorming. Um, oh. Okay. So. Whoa. Um, yeah, we've got quite a lot of ideas so far. Right. Um, well, post-it notes. First of all, yeah, a lot. Um, first of all, I'll just talk about our vision. Okay. So, like the aims of our project. So it's firstly to move away from globalization to localized craft and mm -hmm. to help facilitate accessibility to local tradition, craft and resources. Um, and then also to highlight old traditions and methods which are at risk. And I think Matilde will talk a bit more about um, how we're going to do that. So uh, the project uh, outcome is going to be an application. And the app is centered around a map of your local area and it allows the user to search through through it with lenses. Mm -hmm. And the three main lenses, one is going to be physical resources, community resources, and historical resources. Okay. Uh, which I know, like, uh, yeah, the main, uh, uh, yeah, search, um, search lenses that are going to that are going to allow you to kind of like search through uh, the application and um, maybe, yeah, I don't know if, or Jess or, wait. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to read. I, I, I think I get a, a, a sense. Run through those three lenses again. Uh, Physical resources. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, an yeah, app. yeah. You you search through it like through a map of your local area. Yeah. And then you can kind of within this local area, you can choose to look at physical resources, community resources, or history. And so, uh, what will be in within history? Uh, Rana, do you wanna or do you want me to? Because because within history, it would be more like of, old. yeah. Okay. Well, history links the two, so that was the idea of what we were going to do. So, um, physical resources would be like the geographical, like, um, context of the place and like what's available there, like in those terms. Community would be more like the artisans, businesses that are there, and then the history ties the two. So it's like the tradition of the place, what's historically okay. been sort of there. So that that was kind of our thinking behind the three. Sort of and and how same, big are your yeah. places? What, what, what's the scope of, of, of what do you define as a place? Because I mean, for um, instance, we're it, still it, kind of like it could be a town or it could be a yeah. house <laughs> estate or. I think you're, you'd be able to define that as you like as you navigate the app. You can choose okay. kind of what you consider to be yeah you could you could zoom out because in our more brandy kind of uh, research we were looking a mm -hmm. lot at like lenses magnifying glasses and things like that so i think it would have to be kind of a feature of the app to mm -hmm. be able to kind of so that the user has a bit of mobility in terms right. of like what they consider to be like cl really close to them yeah i think uh, are there any are there any things like this already in existence i mean i'm thinking of like yeah that's um, and stuff like that. so, research yeah so so um, so you've got to identify why your idea why your vision would improve on any anything existing mm -hmm. or connect with existing yeah it's um, um sorry i knew i would go for it yeah. Well, I was just we we kind of looked at some existing apps and brands that um show like for example like local produce or yeah like, the um the other ones that we looked at were like kind of just more like sustainable or like ethical brands um and I think for like our most like our biggest stand the way we stand out is because like it's like local craft and what's like like um kind of 
the, the potential of your area, like, and as a kind of general, so like, um, yeah, the kind of crafts that did exist there, the kind of crafts that do exist there, mm -hmm. and like how you can kind of, uh, through generations, maybe share those crafts in the kind of community resources area, for example. Um, yeah, if that, if that makes so it's sense. kind of more connecting to um, people rather than just like having the map is quite um, yes soulless just kind of having these kind of visuals that you can see and um, that we found so kind of collect, connecting that more to local communities mm -hmm. would be our idea so I, I, I see a balance I see a potential balance between a rural environment and an urban environment because in an, an urban environment then you're more like you obviously you'll find more people and there are more people to connect but in a rural environment instinctively you're thinking there'll be more 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 crafts to to, mm -hmm. to en engage with so it's um not quite sure what my question is there but i'm as you you've got me thinking about about uh how it would work and how you'd get um because I, I as you said uh it relies on people so how do you get people in to to be be involved or or be accessible through your app because it's like you, you you're sort of starting from ground zero, uh, and so um, are you think, looking, are you looking to approach people or to find people or are you or are you hoping that they'll come to you? Um, I th I think it'll be it would be a mix like there would be some already present resources mm -hmm. like open open source stuff that we would be putting on there right, like that right. or maybe like or historians or like basically outside sources and then it could be added upon by uh people that are in those areas so it would be kind of two way street and to get people involved at some point uh we had this uh idea of having maybe something along the lines of like an ar filter or something like this to get it kind of to jump start it uh, so that people can share it on their social media mm -hmm. like, yeah maybe it's a, if that's what you're kind of talking about like the branding of like trying to promote this idea is that what you're getting to yeah just awareness of you know uh, it, it's it, it's it's a chicken and egg you know if you if if there are no people there then you've got nothing to promote and if mm -hmm. there are uh, 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 people there then then yeah not explaining myself properly um it's it's one of those things that, that that is very difficult to get off the ground and so so you'd have to put a think carefully about about how you reach a, a, a kind of level that is that is w worth people accessing so um so that's kind of one aspect the other aspect i'm, I'm interested in is um to what ex extent is this kind of uh, uh kind of altruistic you know, to you, you, you sharing resources, or, or um, is it um, commercial? So I'm looking for a mechanic, car mechanic. Oh, Bill in, in the next street, he's a car mechanic. And, and so are you looking at a balance of um, free services and, and paid for services that people can, can share? I think we were looking towards like, um sharing of crafts more than right, like okay. and skills so mm -hmm. like traditional skills that might be lost over time having that connection okay. in the community yeah so that's kind of the historical aspect of it because that's also look at like location based too yeah and um, it's more like a sort of arts and crafts sustainable kind of low so like localized crafts that are sustainable yeah, well, uh, uh, restoring cars is a craft don't, don't yeah. get me wrong <laughs> um um yeah go on. no i was i was just thinking it might meet it might be a bit of a mix of both because like some so we might have some crafts on there uh that are just kind of an open source kind of thing like i don't know imagine uh someone who's a bit older who knows this old scottish technique of weaving mm -hmm. they plop it on there uh for free then some but then there's some aspects of the map you know depending on the lens you choose where it's like i want to eat out to, in a restaurant that is that only uses local produce because that's mm -hmm. really like that's the focus yeah. is lo the locality of it you i feel like you could find that on there as well right. like it's yeah 
Yeah, I, I mean, think... what we're talking about is it's quite a broad spectrum of things, which which mm -hmm. then you use filters to kind of define what it is you're interested in within within that space. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the that's the thing that we're still working on, and that's what we also wanted to ask you. Like, do you feel like from what we're talking about? Uh, what we're doing is a bit too broad. Like, do you do you think like we need to narrow it down? Um, yes and no. I mean, I think it has to be comprehensive to be of value. And and if it's going if it's going to be a successful venture, it, it has to be broad and it has to be comprehensive. In terms of um, achieving some immediate results, you also then need to focus on on an aspect. So I don't think you can afford to lose sight of the whole scope but I do think you need to kind of decide which bit you might you might be me thinking about and and demonstrating the the, the reality of um, it's um yeah it, it's it's potentially a big project I mean it's it's it's, uh, it, it's potentially vast and then in some ways uh, it needs to be vast to be successful uh, otherwise, it might be a little bit too esoteric. I mean, not everybody is going to be interested in that Scottish weaving. Uh, but then, then, then on, you, you can't predict who will or who won't. So I might be looking for a car mechanic and I discover Scottish weaving. And it's like, oh, that's very interesting. And so, so it's both a, a, a if you like, a, there are practical components and there are kind of educational or just uh, other interests components mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. um, finding a good balance there I, I think would be interesting well, that was great is there any Did that answer your question any last few words are, are we running out of time again Sophia yeah <laughs> we've finished <laughs> so any last few words and then did I, did I say this was like speed dating at the beginning of this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Sorry, I've got to go and meet some more people. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for so, your feedback. Any last questions? Um, think, no, thank yeah. you. I'm really looking forward to, to, to seeing this because this is this is an app that anybody could use, anybody and everybody. Uh, and, and it'd be interesting to see how you kind of focus that. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank I you. think I have to well click done. the exit button and see you again next week. That was more about what we're doing. Yeah. All right, can you go there? Okay. Anyway, Ooh. but then um, you're very, we can't hear you. Hmm. You're mute. Now? Yes. 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 Uh, that was a really good summary. I think yeah, we're still at that stage where we're not very sure which way to like which path to go down like we've got this big idea this vision um we don't really know what the best way is to bring it to life um now we've been doing some research into what already exists and i guess that's kind of going to guide um what the need is like what's lacking out there um i think uh anna and will have done some research into what already exists i feel like that could be interesting to hear about yeah i was just doing some user research stuff so I think yeah I could take this or Anna if you want to take it I don't mind um, yeah so what we've been uh, founding was like most of science art residencies are focused on like 
either well-established artists or scientists. And um, sometimes it's not like a two-way collaboration, it's more like the artist goes there to the science center or like to the research center to work with them. So we were thinking more in a, as I will say, like the audience, more focused on people that don't usually have access for that, to that, like early practitioners, either artists, scientists, or like social scientists, or any other background, and you can collaborate depending on your needs from the user uh, research that uh, Liv and I have been doing. So it's like depending on your interests, you, if you want to like gain a new skill, if you want to like get a product out of it, or if you just want to focus on the process, experiment, discover, think or your practice. So depending on those like interests, we were thinking of like the idea of a Tinder for collaboration, depending on your interests, uh, what you want to learn from that. So if anyone else wants to add something to that. Um, I'm not sure if you mentioned uh, already, but maybe how it's different from like what we're doing now is that it, it wouldn't have a kind of outside person facilitating it necessarily, unless that was part of the collaboration that they wanted. But um, it's not kind of a taught workshop. It's more, yeah, more free flow. I think some of the maybe questions that we had for you would be like your experience working with um, people from different uh, creative backgrounds or scientific mm -hmm. disciplines and if, if there is anything that you know out there that does pair people from our traditional artist backgrounds like creative backgrounds and traditional science backgrounds um, if, there, if that does exist already and any options you know for like things that are more focused at early careers so people who just starting out maybe not sure what they're doing or if they want to just focus on one thing or if they want to broaden their horizons a bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, you've still got a couple more seconds if you want to add anything else to it or no, nope. all shaking Sorry. heads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we want to develop, yeah, yeah, let's go. No, do it. Say what you were going to say. We want, to, we want a mutual understanding of each other's practices and we want more, um, I guess, just more opportunities to try something that you wouldn't. Just, I think a lot of university courses are quite narrow, narrow focus and you focus just on one thing. Um, I think by having people from different skills or different disciplines that might, if they, if they just come together for instance, just like two weeks or a month or whatever, I don't think we're focusing on maybe, we're focusing on maybe short term that then once they go off, they can either, they've got that connection established, they can maybe work that person again, or they can then transfer that to their own work and have like a, maybe a different way of seeing things, I think would be the main, the goal of it. Yeah. Great, good. Cool guys, I think that's really cool. Um, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if you, if you see it as a type of a residency or would it be a platform or a course and and would it you know would it maybe be offered at a you know at conventional universities or was it something that could maybe live online so so basically a, a, a organizational company that that offers this online and that in a way would maybe already help in terms of the facilitation so which you might not need if you, you said you might not have a facilitated space then it could be like a free or you know like an open space where people can come together and you know work together without necessarily having having a facilitator but perhaps there are resources and there's you know material that they can work on or organizations that they could connect to um you know um or or there might be some sort of facilitator yeah. that that only helps with um you know you know resources um, particularly maybe and not you know or, or there might be a limit into how involved they would be um what did you guys think did you think what uh, just in terms of where it would live what would it what it would be um i think that's kind of what we're trying to figure out with some of the you questions that we're drafting so that's the kind of things that that we're wanting to ask people and then we'll also sort of bring our own ideas into that as well but we will find out from as as wide a variety of people what what mm -hmm. kind of think collaboration is and how it, they would want it to function yeah i think i think um yeah, that's that's probably your your main thing at the moment that you're trying to get. I can I can feel that you're trying to find every avenue to kind of solve, you know, 
I think uh, I, I always find that the word platform uh, can be like a bit of a killer in that in that because because I don't really know what it means. You know, I think when I say platform, I think of like uh, I can think of an app, but then I can think of a space, but then I think of this. So it's a really difficult word to kind of define. Um, but I think um, if you're looking for examples of what's happening, the only thing that springs to mind at the moment is I think there's a couple of courses at UAL where they bring scientists in for like a project, but there's nothing that's like independent or its own space, um, which you know, I think there was a bit of, it felt like there was a bit of excitement there around the idea of you having a space where this happens, you know, I see nodding and faces. That's a good thing that you're all nodding. You know, I think, I think that, could be your your kind of uh, edge there is that you host this space for other people to come into to then collaborate um, which obviously at the moment you know you don't you don't necessarily have we don't have to have the funding for it or whatever you know you can be like we want your space to bring people in and do this or yeah, yeah. you could have your own little space but my brain immediately said like a like a summer camp, <laughs> an art science summer camp. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. But yeah, I think uh, you you've already nailed the specifics of kind of your vision there, which is golden. You know, keep that. I think focusing on science and focusing on the arts is is the right thing to do. You know, because you could be like the arts with everyone. It's like yeah, that's great and all, but it's like where, how do you organise that? How do you get your edge? So well done for already getting that part too. Um, yes, Gooch, do you have anything? Sorry, I'm just babbling now. No, that's cool. I think, uh, Wall, did you want to say something or you had your hand up? Um, yeah, just just quickly, I think I used platform because it was ambiguous, like really ambiguous, and we just didn't sure. know which one we wanted to go for yet. Um, mm. I, I think from my experience, um, I think we wanted to offer something alternative to this way of um, doing things online. Hmm. So, and it's kind of that speculative, I know that's not possible right now, but maybe in the future it will be. Um, and it certainly stems from certainly my experience of university and things being quite insular in departments. Um, but I did do a project with architecture students and engineering students one time, and that was probably one of the best projects I ever did. Um, so I think there is, there is maybe a hunger for, for this, and that's sort of what, where this is rooted, I think. But yeah, it's a, the question is, and um, maybe this is a question for for Abby and sort of cap how sort of do we need to like have a pool of money in our heads or can we just go and say the government's just going to fund this kind of thing? I think I think be bold and just go for it. I think uh, a lot of the time. Actually, I'll give you a very specific example of a module where I did this. So when I was a student on module, uh, my project was around. It was a book to do with. Uh, encouraging adults to uh, be a bit more kid-like and be a bit more play and when we pitched it on the final evening we had all the mock-ups it looked like a real book it didn't exist at all we had no funding to print it we had no intention to print it I did a think I think at one point I was attempting to bind some books and I was like no I just need to if, if you make a good enough mock-up and tell people it exists they'll be like so where can I buy this? And you go, well, if you pay me first <laughs> to help develop it and fund it, then it can be a thing. So I think, yeah, be bold and kind of uh, almost attempt to be like it, it exists already or like, well, not it exists already, but we are this, this and this. We don't have a specific address yet <laughs> or the money for this and that. But if you can bring everything else up to that standard, then people will believe that it exists already and be signing up, I reckon bit of a fire festival mentality there but just don't don't send people to an island for a festival that doesn't exist um i think it's it's really exciting i would love to maybe join you know in one of these residencies but um i think obviously maybe i hear from you that you would like to perhaps have a physical space um you know having an online presence would definitely i'm sure like also play a role and how, how do you tap into that because um you know how would it if i mean i was thinking even if you did not have a space would would there be something around people opening up their spaces so if people um do collaborate you know maybe there's an artist that has a workshop then you know they 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 come together at that space so it could be 
doesn't even have to be you know bound to one one place it could be quite um it could be global like you know people can people get connected and then they you know um come together in a space that they that, that you know that they have or that they can get or i mean that's quite broad thinking but i mean i'm just trying to think of you know specific things that makes yours like you know specific ideas that makes it a bit different or unique or that could cross some of those those boundaries in terms of like having it in a specific way that it needs to be in you know you know that it's different from traditional traditional um platforms i quite like the, the word platform myself because i kind of feel that it's kind of something that holds holds you and then of it but the, it's such a broad term it's it's you know it's whatever you make of it like it could be an app or a you know website or whatever um I'm fine with the word platform at the moment. It's just when it comes to the it comes to the final pitch and you're telling me it's a platform, I'm like, where am I going? Where, I, what, what am I supposed to do? So you're right for now. I understand it for sure. But yeah, that's a great. You know, like you can almost hot desk other people's spaces and like yeah, find different big, big massive uh, science companies and go. We're coming in and we're bringing yeah. in for a bit that are going to mm. help your scientists be more creative for a little mm. bit. Or, you know, yeah, go into a, like a science university and going, right, we're going to drag all these art students with us mm. and, and make this happen. I think maybe you're the, the link to it, Will. Yeah, so is that more like an exchange as well? Yeah. Would be, so it's not a physical thing, it's more of a, a way or an organisation which brings, connects people together or sort of brings people into somewhere rather than having two separate people bring in together maybe it's more of a thing that you move thing one thing over to the other hmm. does that sound more like what you were saying is that close what you guys are saying but yeah i think i think that sounds great i mean it could be a plus i mean there's i think it's kind of the thinking which ideas are what would kind of stick and stay but i mean what you're saying then maybe as a science organization they would possibly you you would have this this platform and and you you are people know about you but then the residency could um pick the you know um have the interest of a science organization to they want they want something new they want to commission someone and then they go to you because you have the, the arts and the science background and then but then they would work with, with you in 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 their building or in their space and so it's almost like a I want to say like a, a, um, a mobile residency in a sense. I mean, that's just one idea. It doesn't, I think that's what we, you were saying, but it, it it doesn't have to be that at all. I mean, the idea of having a space just in itself like is also wonderful because, you know, um, that's, you can have everything there together and, you know, that could be a melting pot in its own as well. Um, and, and it doesn't have to always, you know be limited to to that space but but um yeah there's you know simple simple things like like just having a physical space is always isn't isn't necessarily it could be a, an amazing thing it doesn't have to to be like super out there for it to be re like really impactful as well if you have a different you know idea attached to that um or need mm. great stuff really nice. i think we're pretty much out of time but your, your specificness is already going to work in your favor straight away you know you guys have nailed what you want to do straight away and i think that'd be great try and name yourselves if you can i know this what was it uh collab crew, collab crew yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting reminds me of, uh, i think we used to have a a thing when I was a teenager with social crew or something like that that was like teaching you about bad things in the world that's why it's think it makes me think of that but um yeah you know give yourself a little mini brand or whatever and uh get going mm. bit exciting stuff nice really cool good luck guys enjoy see you around thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. Oh, thank you. Bye. <laughs>
Like more practical that way, like in the sense you want to use some kind of technology. Okay. And um, technical aspect also give us like a educational feedback. Like currently, so much education is online, so why can't our app also help in educating people while it's serving the purpose of being the practical mode? Yeah, of course it can. I was just saying that uh, we, if we can focus on one aspect for now, and then once we develop that, we can always add that extra icon of like oh there's a blog what is the people who are locally producing this here is how you can connect with them can, can we say that the two topics are creating some kind of community exchange or scanning in uh, grocery stores and getting the yeah because i think again the original idea that we voted on here was that and then said it was a complete shopping website on its own Whereas mm -hmm. with, with where we are at right now, it's more of a scanning app where it can be used anywhere to get the same information that the original idea had. That makes sense. Uh, uh, I'll just read 
what the original one was. The concept was makes it easy to know what foods are most sustainable, categorized by local foods packaging, food miles, uh, online shopping connected. It will indicate food miles packaging so you can identify what food is most sustainable. That was the original concept, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I don't, I really don't think we need to select one of the two. I feel like they can be merged. We just need to select who works on which part of the research. I really think the two things that like, like uh, Kelly said, to connect the community, you need a medium. Like you can't just, like most people don't even know who their neighbors are. So to remember, to know who's growing fruits somewhere in the side of the city, obviously it's impossible. So I feel like let's just all work on both the ideas. Well, both the ideas are incredible. So let's just work like half and half, where half of us research just the community part, half of us research the scanning part, but we incorporate both of the main idea of the app. Does that work? Yeah. Are we doing an app then? App for sure, I, yeah. I suppose. Okay. And um, yeah. I mean, where the aspect of when you're scanning things and then the, uh, if, if a produce is from another uh, place, if it's not locally grown, then like Kelly said, we could um, have local alternative suggestions. And then yeah. the page can also um, suggest swapping or stuff like that. If you, there is an added feature there only. Yeah, maybe so, can tell you like maybe in, instead of buying it from the supermarket, maybe you can go to this local producer who has fresher vegetables and it's probably more yeah. nutritious. That's why we come into like the midpoint of the two research sites that we're going to take, where it'll be like, instead of being supermarket, why don't you go to this community person? So I feel like it's perfectly in between when that happens. Yeah, and I think, again, maybe encouraging people to switch locally, like instead of going to supermarkets, going to these locally produce, to like people who produce vegetables locally and buying the vegetables from there because it might be cheaper as well. I think um, it's really just, I'm um, sorry, I thought you finished. Go ahead. Um, you just gave me the idea as well if we did that where like you scan a certain fruit or vegetable and then it pops up with like alternatives to buying. People like small businesses and people can log themselves on the app as like I have tomatoes. So you don't have to be a a company like you can be a person as well maybe and then it's just like tomatoes in your area like if we divide it up in um the specific fruits and vegetables then maybe that will make it easier yeah i, I would yeah. like to think in terms of convenience i don't know if i'd go to like five different people for five different vegetables if you know what i mean yeah that's also valid yeah, valid, yeah. I'd, <laughs> rather, I'd rather go to a general local producer who produces say, multiple vegetables and buy my vegetables from them instead of the supermarket if I'm someone who's interested in sustainability. Correct. But that can yeah. encourage more pop-up market stalls. So near, near where I live, um, in the car park of the Working Men's Club, there is now a butcher and a greengrocer that comes every Saturday and we just walk there, get some food. So the, 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 what from what you're saying about the sustainability and trying to be practical, it could encourage more pop-up local markets. So you only say, well, you know, Wednesday evening or a Saturday morning, you know that five minutes away, there's a pop-up with some fish and fried land. I, I think it's quite common in London uh, as well, at, at, like on, on the weekends, especially where I live, like just, so I live in Shoreditch, so in my lane, like just behind that lane, every Saturday and Sunday, there used to be um, like a local market with, where people used to come with all sorts of vegetables and fruits. I think because we're really focusing on one city, mm -hmm. we can really talk uh, to the to the business that like really in the room, like ne next, like in the countryside of uh, near London. So it's actually people feels like they are more involved. Also, um, also, I, I um, yeah, it's, it's just, um, what is it? Because um, uh, we, we want to create it like, I, I'm not sure if I understand this right, but it feels like um, your voice is cracking. Sorry? Um, your voice was cracking. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, better now. Yeah. All right. So, because I, I feel like, um, for sustainable food or probably people are more like 
are we relating this to organic or um, and like if they if we really are science for example we recommend some um, high quality local farmers they will um, firstly they will have a good uh, impression of the food and they uh, also we they give them a good, good sign like um, like uh, they can really find them like nearby. Okay, yeah, should we start researching then? Should we break up into two different groups and research, uh, you know, growing within communities and uh, uh, scanning, yeah. um, scanning software and growing in local local communities. So in stores specifically as well, right? Like clear over the each will be perfect to uh, also take up the sample. So I'm going to go for in the, sorry, Yo, Ali. Do you want to be in the community part of it? Uh, yeah, I'll do community. Okay, so okay, Kelly's community. What about um, you, Apeksha? I will be on the scanning part of it. So, okay. Scanning app. Yeah. I'll be collecting data for the nutrition and things like that to help, let's say, uh, building up this, uh, what's it called, the mock up. I'm sorry. I'll be collecting data for like nutrition, like all the information of the, of the sustainable product to help with the mock-up. So the scanning part then. No, so the scanning, yeah. okay, cool. Uh, Michelle? You're on mute. We can't hear you. You're on mute, Michelle. Anyway, um, I, d I don't mind. I'm just kind of trying to split the ideas into like the the communities and then the oh, so it's communities and scanning, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think that and that was quite a useful little tool as well. I found with the brainstorming. Um, no, I, which one do you want to work on with the research? Do you want to work with the community part or the? Who's on? Oh. What, what the numbers like? So, so Wesley, Kelly is working on the community, and uh, Apeksha and Tiffany are in the scanning part. The AR technical bit. Like yeah. Just for now, just researching so that we can bring together our research. Yeah, we we'll build it together. It's, yeah. yeah. We'll build it together just for research part. We can to choose which side we want to go on. Because it's quite possible yeah. that once we do our research, it's quite difficult to do one of them and then we can maybe just focus yeah, on the other. Exactly. Maybe we get enough research on both and we can build something yeah. that, that works together. Yeah. So I think I, I'm personally planning going into the community. What about you, um, Stan? Um, I can do the scanning bit, I guess. Okay, so then Michelle, you're with me and Kelly on the community thing. Is that cool? Oh, yeah. Perfect. So Kelly, Michelle, and I are going to be working on uh, researching the community part of it, which is people grow and help each other, like giving to each other. And Apeksha, Muskan, and Tiffany will be working on the scan part of it, the AR part of it. Cool? Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah, so um, what the, what's the time there? It's 3.42 at the moment. Um, are we supposed to be going back to the main room at a particular time today? Yeah, I think, you know, they haven't told us yet, but I'm assuming they're going to put it on the info channel sometime. Yeah, I don't think they mentioned anything. Uh, should we ask Aiden if he's here? Hello. Aiden, I don't think, oh, if he is. Oh, hi. Yeah. Um, I don't, I've not seen anything yet, just Give me a minute and I'll get back to you. Um, I think there probably will just be a little bit at the end. Um, the Fred might just want to talk or it might just be straight till five. Um, but yeah, I'll post in our channel just to check, just to double check and let you know. Cool. Okay, so maybe we can take, say, half an hour, 40 minutes now.
and research and whatever we get we can discuss it so after half an hour or if you want to that or let's just take this as a project to do and we can reconvene like on monday with all of our research like we'll have our mood boards on on um, what's the name uh miro we have our mood boards on miro ready so the two teams do their research and put it up there so everyone can see it and then when we meet on monday we'll have names for the thing we'll have our categories ready and research we'll have our target group so it's pretty good to go on for monday then we can start making bioframes and everything else um the problem here is actually if we do that then uh, if we end up researching on the two and find one option more viable than the other then we'll again be in a mix up there so i prefer that just spend half an hour right now to get a rough idea if uh, the both of both of them could go hand in hand or we have to focus on either one of them so that we can like just focus on that one if if that is the case Okay, what's for me? Let's move. We can do that. Uh, uh, just the. So you, you all wanna meet? Back. Sorry, just about the uh, going back to the Zoom room. You don't need to today. Um, you just uh, after. Yeah, we just wanna go into buddy time at quarter to five, so four forty-five, um, and yeah, just do fifteen minutes, you know, buddy time. Talk to each other, and then uh, you can go off and chill or do whatever you want. Um, yeah, so that's that's really it. So, so we have no Zoom today. Then. Yeah, you got the yeah, you got exactly an hour. So okay. um, yeah, if you need anything, um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep popping in now for the next hour. Um, I'm just looking up some links and stuff for you guys that might be quite interesting. Um, and I'll just drop them in the chat. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting what you're talking about just now. And it's it's nice to see you are, uh, you know, splitting up the uh, the tasks to try and uh, kind of break them down and go through them a bit quicker. So, yeah, fantastic. I'm just checking out your Miro board now and it looks good. So, uh, yeah, crack on, smash it as always. Yeah, so I guess let's just take a quick half an hour research Thing, like just research for say like 30 minutes see where we're at then you can share and then maybe finalize the idea today so that over the weekend we can brainstorm on how we'd like to go ahead with that specific app do we have um do we want to make boards for putting the research in uh you can make boards or you can like on your own computer just make notes and then because i think it's quite quick research Okay. Like up to you, however you would like to share them, and then you can do again, but like the five minute per person, just tell what your research was, and then we can again take a vote together. So, just are we doing our own research for about half an hour on what we think we envisioned it to be, which we then share with the group and we vote on which direction? I think uh, just general research, so like what exists already about like growing vegetables in the community, what exists about like learning about the the carbon footprint of food in, in stores, like, yeah. Um, I thought I got kind of kicked out of the meeting in between, so I just wanted to know what did Aiden say, I didn't surely hear what he said. Say that again? No, I I just didn't get to hear what Aiden said about do we have to go back into the meeting on meeting or not? Uh, right. No, we don't. Oh, okay. So what time are we reconvening? Like after we do our research? So like in half an hour. So it's eight. Half a, like in half an hour. So let's just say four thirty BST. Yeah. Have a work. Okay. Is that okay for everyone? Sorry, what time? Yeah. 4:30 BST. 4:30, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, so see you all then. I yeah. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.
journey each or we create for our yeah, we, could, we could maybe if we could settle on a brief like mm -hmm. from the team we could actually like maybe you could do one and i could do one and then people could um we could add notes okay. or we could even do it together because it's if we can just share the file mm -hmm. um and make like a test app instead of trying to do a website or something mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I think uh, we will start on the mirror for a journey. So mm -hmm. uh, anyone can put the, the put steps the, or anything. So mm -hmm. I can go to translate to Adobe XD after that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna put an image of Adobe XD for for people who don't know what we're talking about. Oh. Uh, also, can we like decide on what the final app would be doing? Like, what the final goal of what we want to present? Yeah, I, th I think we said it sounded like an app, right? So I'm just going to share this. You mean app and the headset, right? Mm. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is slow, but I'm working on it. So, um, do we have a break? No? Yeah. Yeah, we can go for a break, I think. Oh yeah, Connor. Hello. Uh, are we are we have a space in the drop-in session? I'm trying to get that sorted right now. I was just replying to Laura's message. I'm okay. trying to squeeze you in. I'm not sure. It's fully booked. Um, but I wouldn't be concerned because I feel like you guys are in really good place right now. Okay. Um, the, I, I, I can get some feedback for you if you'd like. I can try my best. However, I don't think it's completely necessary for you guys. I feel like you're um, yeah, in a really good place. And mm -hmm. if you have any like questions that you would like to ask and I can pass on to pass on to them, you're more than welcome to ask me. And I can okay. send them on to Hannah and whatnot. So we, can we do that after the break? Of course you can. Yeah. Don't have a break. I'll try, and, I'll try and squeeze you in. If not, send me whatever concerns you have to me and I'll pass them on to uh, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Cool. No Thanks. worries. How long, you, how long do you want to have a break for? <laughs> 15? Five. Ten. 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 All right, cool. Eight. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Back here at four four o'clock British time. Right. Okay. Great work, stuff. Good stuff, guys. I think Joe's promoted you all now, so that's fine.
Um, what's happening? What's occurring? Uh, so we've decided that we're obviously making a website. We've actually decided how the website's going to function now. Um, and the sort of, uh, yeah, the functionality of the website. We've got an idea of some of the content we'll have to be making. Um, we haven't quite allocated out who's going to do what yet. I know that I'm definitely making the website. Um, but yeah. Uh, Hugh, I haven't heard a lot from you. How's it, how's it going for you? Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, it's good. We are, we were deciding the name mm -hmm. just before this. Yeah. Uh, once you've got the name, if you just tell me and then I can make that your group chat name. So it's got a nice cohesion. Um, yeah, I guess just <laughs> work out exactly what it is that you have to do, like you said. So I'm not going to say any more on that. Um, have you got uh, like a, an idea of like branding yet or? Yeah, sort of. Sort of. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on your Myro. Oh bloody hell! There's a lot there. Um. Oh. Ash, you know what you were saying about the veg plots. I'm thinking like it should be like you know you were saying about like a kid game. It could maybe be like quite graphical the veg plot, like have it like quite cute little veggies. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that as well. I was thinking between um, having it like a, a quite like um, quite like flat graphical like kind of block coloured vegetables or having like um, like 3D models as the vegetables that kind of like spin or something if you click on them. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but we could also have the graphics spinning, it's just some sort of fun clicking functionality would be very fun. Yeah, that'd be wicked. Yeah, and I do think, because like, um, I don't know, there's a whole lot to say about like coding for nature and like treating them like they're like they're alive and they have a consciousness. I don't know, I feel like they should have maybe like a, I guess if they are moving, they should maybe have like little eyes or something and then, yeah, I guess like it'd be really cool if you like, like we're to hover over it with like spin and do something like we dance I don't know how feasible that is and I don't know if you need someone to draw them out or whether it would be I think it would look better if it was just very graphical I'm, I'm imagining like I don't know like a like a carrot thing it's quite pale in the middle and then it's got like a dark darker border around the outside of darker orange I don't know It'd probably need to be um, done on Illustrator or Photoshop or something. Mm. Fire the Illustrator, um, and then like put as like files onto the website, and then used as like buttons. But making them spin is like not an issue. So you can make a button do whatever you want. Um, yeah. Would you be looking at getting those three D modelled? Because um, is it how do I pronounce your name? Sorry, is it sub sub Shahidi? <laughs> Yeah, yeah and much. your background's in uh, 3D modelling. Sorry? Your back, did you say your background was like in 3D modelling? Yeah, I know 3D modelling, yeah. But not of animation characters, but others. Yeah, sorry. You, sorry? Um, not animation cartoon characters. I don't know what platform, like what do you use to model on? Yes. Oh, Rhino. Oh. Oh, you're a Rhino. Oh, I use 3DS Mac. Um, I'm Blender. Blender if I'm being lazy. Blender, I'm just learning that. Blender, are you doing the donut? Oh, I've done oh. the donut. <laughs> yeah. Blender guru all the way. Mm. That was when, when, when quarantine started, they were like, hi, it was like, ah, oh. I did the donut back in January. So, so I felt like a proper, like, been there, done that when all of a sudden everyone was doing donuts. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. yeah, no, um, sounds like you're on track and that you just need to like talk ideas through. Uh, if you need any help, just let me know. 
Is anyone confident then in doing the graphics for it? I'm I'm happy to take on the role of like research, you know, testing, getting images of testing and stuff like that. I just feel like I'm not very confident with Illustrator or graphics or website design. I don't know, I'm just saying that now because I feel like I'm not going to have a lot of input in the graphical kind of technical side of it. That's fine. I feel like you have a fair amount of knowledge. Um, and if you just like, I don't know, I feel like, yeah, you have a fair amount of knowledge. It'd be nice to compile, I guess, like you to focus on that and compile it into like. Yeah, basically. I could put it on a Google Drive or I could, uh, I don't know, maybe just put it on a PDF or maybe over the weekend, just like try to get all the resources that I've got together and like make it into a file or PDF and then I can post it on the Slack. Yeah, maybe start to categorize some of the stuff. So like, yeah. Yeah, this is for the cabbage, this is for onion, onion skins, this is for like uh, other vegetables and stuff. Yeah, that would be awesome. Categorization so I can just like pop it onto the website. Yeah. Um, yeah different files for different vegetables and I feel like we should keep it pretty basic though because I don't want to do too much in it because it obviously there's thousands of stuff that I could research into so okay. I don't know maybe focus on veg. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on veg. yeah I guess also we don't really need it for like editing or every type of veg because it's just going to be on the promotional video so yeah, yeah. I could just do like six vegetables and like six plants or something and then it's got a range of it and then we can maybe put that in the bed and mean we've got like 12 plants yeah so like in terms of the website like obviously not the whole of the map is going to work maybe just um one area of the map will work so that i can work on the functionality of that but i'll make it look like every area of the map works but yeah it will yeah. all highlight when i hover over it <laughs> but only one of them will actually be clickable maybe yeah how many do you think then because then we can start on the guest the graphic graphic side of it if i like research into a certain amount and then we can choose but maybe i'll do the research see how many like good looking like plants i can get and good looking veg i can get and then if we say like i don't know like 10 or 12 and then once i've got that research people can start maybe creating the imagery for it and how that going? We should also make make sure that they all do, like we have a variety of colours, so that you know, we have like a blue, a red, a green, a purple. Um, so it's like, oh, you can do all the different colours. There's so much variety. Yeah, I think like since you're in Scotland, Rachel, why don't make it like Scotland or like UK because that's like where you are. That's like where you die. That's like, I guess you really probably have a lot of the information of like the local uh, things you can get. So you would that would lessen your research probably if you yeah cool and then we can just like have a map and then as if you just clicked on scotland then you would zoom into that area yeah that sounds good yeah is everyone uh happy with where this is headed i haven't heard from you uh Washington, in like quite a while sorry i haven't heard from you in ages what are you think no, no. no i said it's good so i, okay, I, I said great. <laughs> Uh, I just want to make sure that everyone's like really comfy and good with the idea and that you know we all got our voices heard and stuff. Yeah I think for the like the graphic design itself there's someone who's being in charge of it because it's a lot of work. Um, I guess I could do some of the graphics right um, and I could like start thinking of maybe a logo or something. That'd be awesome. Um, I can draw something, but I'm not good at designing. So if you need any help, like maybe you design a carrot, I can help you draw like a cabbage of the same design. The yeah. So maybe you, if you, we could together, we could like draw the, the cabbages. Um, we know it. We know we do like cabbage for sure. Are there any other things that we know for sure like are going to be in the website? Like beetroots. Okay, all right. So, carrots. I don't know. Can you die with carrots? <laughs> uh, well, I wrote. I did. You guys see on a thing? Uh, so let me just call out some of the ones that are like very like we could definitely put in. Um, daffodils and turmeric. The yellow. Mm -hmm. They're quite good. Red onions. They do. Which is strange, but I don't know. You know. <laughs> Are daffodils yellow? Yeah. 
And then we've got a wad plant for blue. That's like a strong contender. Um, what? Wad plant. What plant? Wad. How do you spell that? W O A D. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that either. What is that? It's a plant. <laughs> it's like a flower. Oh, blue. Oh, flower. Yeah, it's like kind of yellow. And that makes blue. Yeah. We can also use blue pea flower. What did you say? Oh, you're muted. Camilla, you're muted. Sorry, I said you use blue pea flower. It's like a deep indigo color. That may be quite hard to draw though if it's a flower. Oh, a, fl a flower is something. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes, a flower. Oh. Oh yeah, that's what we talked about the other day, isn't it? <laughs> the only thing is that it's found in Asia, so I don't know if that links to the Scotland thing. But tree work isn't in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, you, you can grow it here. I guess so. You can grow. It's like I, I, I mean, I don't know how many people grow turmeric. It's generally imported. We generally import it from other countries. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll have a look. Uh, let me let me research over the weekends. Then we can narrow down our veggies. I know avocado stones do pink, mm. so that's another one. I tried to dye with them the other day though, and. I used what like two avocado pits and it was so light and it just washed out completely. So you need, obviously need like 50,000 <laughs> to like show up. Uh, I've got a friend at uni who did some dyes of avocado pits and I think what she did is went to a trendy uh, cafe and was like, would you mind saving me all the avocado pits that you use today? And they were like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and at the end of the day, she went back and had a ton of them to use. So. Nice. Um, can we? Can we? Um, so, like, we have a we have like three people have like said I don't know, or we've got a few roles. Said Ash was website functionality. Rachel research mainly in vegetables, some flowers. Misty graphics logo. Hugh can help draw vegetables um like what else do we think really needs to be done like we need to vote on the name yeah, yeah. should we do that now let's go to the miro and have a look at the name suggestion right we've got uh die me uh, die before you die, die for change, wear your vegetables, or DIY die. So should we just, uh, I guess, like put in the um, keys chat, whichever one we want, and whichever one gets the most, uh, we should pick, maybe? Is everyone okay to like just chat, put they, what they want on, this, on the fuse chat? Seems like by me is the choice there. Oh, I haven't voted. <laughs> oh. Do you think maybe um 
people might read it like ye ye me. Like they might not get that it's guy me. How about for like a high dash? I think it's about like the logo yeah, yeah. And like how it looks on the website. Because I think it's like the typography, you can make the D, Y, like the capital D, capital, and then the M, capital, then you know it's two words, even if they're yeah. Do we have a winner then? I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> I think like regardless of how familiar votes, I think we've got like everyone yeah. else's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd say that's like fairly unanimous. Um, what were you going to go for, Camilla? To be honest, I, I, I like wrote half of them, so I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got a winner, I guess, our website. It's called Die Me, which is cool. Um, yeah, so... I'm gonna get a cracking on starting to make the code for it. Um, yeah, and like the skeleton, I guess, for the website. Uh, Camilla, do you wanna start maybe storyboarding or like thinking of ideas for um, the film? Um, well, I, I know you're, you're researching the vegetable gardens, aren't you? I, oh, so we, okay, I completely forgot about, we are including that <laughs> in the website then. So yeah. Did you see the audio is breaking for me? Guys, is it going to be on a separate page? Or like, an um, add on at the end, or how are we going to put that into the function of the website? <laughs> if it's all like infographic, how do we... Yeah, I don't really know. But I could put it there. Yeah, I'm also not sure yet, but I will try and figure it out while I'm making the website. Um, just like I'll chuck in like a way to get to that information, maybe. Um, yeah, I'll see what I can if I if I can figure it out, and if I can't, then we'll go back to the drawing board with it. Um, what should, what's Shubhash, sorry I can't see your name, Shubhash we need doing? <laughs> what role do you want to do? So, I mean, what, what else is there? Because for now, um, I think you and you have chosen, uh, about, I mean, you both are planning to do the graphics. And Ash is doing uh, the website, and then uh, I don't know what are the other uh, rest there. What else do we have? Um, maybe I guess think of like ideas uh, for poster. Sorry. sorry? <gasps> Um, maybe we can think of ideas for poster and like for the video. Okay. Yeah. Camila, what are you wanting to work on? Are you wanting to do like research into the... I can look into the community stuff. Like how you to... You also come with some ideas for the film because you're good at that. Do what? I didn't hear what you're saying. Some ideas for the film. I can't hear you, man. Ideas for the film as well. What do you say, storyboard for the film? Uh, um, I think the animation thing is a good idea with like little pieces of fabric moving around a page. Like a stop motion? You see? So, were you saying something like a stop motion? Yeah, um, with like fabrics moving around the page. Yeah. But, yeah. So, so Russia, do you mind doing like dy dyeing the, the clothes during this weekend? 
What what do you yeah. mean? I have I have photographs of of the of me dyeing the clothes, but what do you mean like a video? We have no idea actually. Do do we want it to be like cut out in like shapes or just like very random shapes? Um, so or did, you, did you, like, ever watch, um, did you ever watch like Art Attack as a kid? Anyone? Um, there was this like program on when uh, I was a kid called like Art Attack and every so often they'd have this thing where they go outside and like lay bits of fabric down and stuff to make a big painting or something. Um, maybe we could do that on like a very small scale, just with like some fabric scraps like laid on a blank background um, and the fabric scraps could and out the title or something um like be laid out like in the type of whatever uh i guess our title was dye me so the fabric scraps can say dye me in a um, you know and then be like photographed a few times like kind of twitching around and we can make it into a gif of like a kind of shifting fabric -y title as an idea uh that wasn't actually my idea that was on the miro board so, uh someone some genius put that on there uh, I thought it was a really cool idea uh, as like a poster sort of uh, moving poster uh, either logo or the whole poster content could be that. I just put a link to like an example of the stock frame. Do you have like a like a <laughs> image of that of that animation of the cartoon? The book is yeah. actually the one. Um, you can type heart attack. Heart attack. Interesting. That wasn't actually a very good example. Um, but th that was just something that I thought of uh, on the spot. But I'm sure there's like much, much, much better examples of that. And I'll try and find one now. It would be cool to do that. And I also think it would be really cool if it was just wool. I've got this new, I just bought this. Uh, like yarn that I could maybe try to dye and then move. I don't know. I can cut. I'll I'll play about with it this weekend if I have time. I'm working all weekend though, so um, <laughs> I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to do it, and there won't be much sun like that. Don't worry about being on the weekend if you're working. That's a bit much. Um, yeah, definitely don't. Uh, over work, but yeah, don't work the weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm doing like two nine hour shifts, so I don't know. I don't know how how much I have time to do it, but I can definitely work on it on Monday. I mean, like we have time. Like Monday day, I can play about with like dyeing some yarn or like I don't know. But I'll do. I'll definitely do the research like tonight and um, at night times at the weekend because that's like easy to like put together. If that's cool for you guys. I also think it might be quite cool if um if it is like a stop motion type thing and it is like moving that like fabric or something. Maybe we a big saucepan with water. I don't know. So then it's like flowing like water. I don't know. Maybe we could just do like a uh, motion uh, motion graphics. So like when we're doing, we just click a picture of each different angle, just little by little, and then you compile all the pictures, and then you can just make a video. Maybe I can show a sample. Maybe. Is there a way of doing that just graphically then, without me having to dye the the cotton? Sorry. Is there a way of, of you, um, I don't know, finding a graphic that has like dye on the cotton rather than me actually having to dye it? You could just do it like graphically. Yeah, I think maybe we can try doing it. I'm not too sure how okay. we can get it, but we, we can try maybe doing it like that. We're chatting about the, um, the video to do like an animation or something. Just trying to. 
is that what, you, what, what we're chatting about? So um, I think like a good place to start is like, what are we saying with the video? Like what's the storyline, the general at like 30 seconds? I don't know, is it gonna be like 30 seconds? Is it gonna be a minute? And like, what do you wanna say? Um, I, was there not like a set um, uh, time? Like, was it meant to be like approximately like two minutes or something? Yeah, two um, I think I remember hearing, but I'm not entirely sure. So, do we want to show all like, like, I don't know, are we going to say like why, 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 why people or why the websites there, or are we just going to talk about the website? So are we going to be like, I don't know, have you been looking for an eco-friendly way of dying your, like, are we going to communicate to like have some sort of dialogue with the viewer? Like, is there going to be any text-based stuff? Like one of the videos had like I don't know, text explaining what, what it is. Are we just going to explain the functionality of the website? Um, Yeah, I think we should discuss this kind of at length on Monday morning when we're like kind of um, going to, I guess, uh, write a list of kind of, I don't know, I think we should sleep on that one. I think we should all have a think and then come back on Monday um, and with, I guess, yeah, with our... Uh, well, maybe we could think of a set of questions that we want to get like we want to like think about um or something like yeah because it's coming to the end of the day and i feel like people are probably tired especially you guys in the second country oh no yeah but, i yeah. feel like the video is such a big thing we probably shouldn't be making like massive decisions about it um like a quickly a final decision is more like a brainstorm of an idea so that like if we have an idea or something that's interesting, we can look for something that has been already done as information. Yeah, why don't we just all have a think about it then over the weekend and stuff and come back with like a notes on Monday and we can have a discussion in the morning and then, yeah. Or maybe we can start chat on Slack. Like yeah, whatever yeah. question comes out, you just type it in. Yeah, and if we find anything like cool, uh, just link it. Um, on the Slack channel, I guess. Does anyone know how to animate? Because uh, the, the video that um, Hui uh, sent is really cool. And it kind of looks like they die. Yeah, it kind of looks like they die, but it's not. Animation is really long. It's like so fucking long to do. It like takes so much time. I'm like, if anyone wants to do it, and they can. It's... I think I'm gonna stick to making the website. That's gonna take um, quite a while. Oh god. I think like GIF is kind of GIF level of animation is quite easy to do. I've done stop motion and like yeah. digital stop motion, so it's kind of like animation. Yeah. Uh, how long were the videos? How Two long minutes. were the videos? Two minutes. No, I mean, how long were the videos that you made? Oh, it's like GIF, so it's only like uh, five seconds. So how long did that take you? I tried to make it very flowy, but like with the YouTube video, it's like not very flowy looking. If you do something like it's very obviously stop motion, I don't think that'll take that long. Could you say but some? We shouldn't do the entire like two minutes of animated thing. Yeah. I was thinking we can use that for the GIF, like the poster or something. I saw I saw like a, a video this filmmaker did yesterday and he like is showing his channel about what he's gonna do and he uses loads of stock images to tell a story. It's like three minutes, but it's such a good video. And it's like I thought it was quite inspiring how you can like 
you can like you can we can we can be I don't know we can whatever story we, we're deciding to tell we can also use stock images to kind of like bring it on like we one of the videos we watched they had loads of like archival imagery in the beginning to then help the story along and then beat matched it so it was like boom 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 which is quite cool. I've just made a video ideas um, square on the Miro, so if we have any video ideas, we can link them there and write them in post-it notes and stuff, if we think of anything um, pressing that we want to chuck in for everyone to see. Um, and it might not get lost like it could do on the Slack chat. Um, I also just saw in the Slack chat that we have to have a sentence summarizing our project. We have one at the top, uh, kind of. Ah. I just saw the sentence. Do you want to like write down what we're going to do during the weekend? I don't really think we should uh, work the weekend unless we oh. really desperately want to. Um, I think it's good to take a break. I personally feel like I need a break. I've had quite an intense week. Um, sure. I think it's probably yeah, it's slightly right. unhealthy to be working the weekend as well. I agree. I also have like a video I have to finish this weekend. But I haven't been able to do very much of this week. Yeah, if you feel like you want to do some research, I think I'll probably be doing some research as well, but I probably won't be, you know, really making anything over the weekend. Um, but yeah, just I reckon have a break um, and then we'll just go full on on Monday. That's good. By the way, I also have loads of shirts if you want to take any photos of anything. Um, when I mean, like, I had, like, since I've been opening up a herbal smoking business, a lot I've been like, a few amount of herbs that we have, and I actually have as well. I don't know if there's like, if you want to take any photos or do any like herb stop motion or something. Um. I just found a 
a really good um, stop motion, which is done with like food. I've put it onto the um, slat, I don't know, whatever it's called, the Miro. But maybe we, for our um, promotional video, we could do stop motion with like the food, like the food that you use to dye, and then like it goes like into the clothes or something, or like the dye you call it. That sounds like a cool idea. We should, um, yeah, we should mm -hmm. consider that. I'll try to get food at least this weekend um, and see how I get on. I'm not promising anything for them. <laughs> I'm pretty busy, but I can definitely work on it next week. I feel like we also haven't had a break in a while, so maybe um, we should take five minutes away from the screen to you know, save our eyes and then reconvene. Um, yeah, do you want to break until quarter two and then we can... Oh wait, have we got to go back into that big Zoom meeting? Uh, I've got no clue. Um, we could break here um, Call it a day on video call, but continue on Miro to uh, collate ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know about everyone else, but I get quite like uh, exhausted by being on camera. I find it quite like intense. <laughs> but just being on Miro and doing ideas, we could carry on doing until uh, I guess five. Yeah. Um, if people feel like, oh Camilla, you're muted. That's fine. I said I haven't actually really been working in the past five to ten minutes. <laughs> I was like laying on the sofa, just muted. Yeah. Um, so should we call it a day on video call um, and just keep brainstorming? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Cool. Um, I'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow.